Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. And today's video is going to be an inside look at how things are done at the Art of Server and some changes that are happening right now. So what you're looking at right now is a Supermicro X8DTH-IF motherboard. And if you've seen my other videos, there was a machine called the Flash that I used to flash all the HPA uh, PCIe cards that I sell that you guys have bought from me and this was that motherboard so it's been about uh two years that it's been in service and over that time i think it's flashed over a thousand cards and i originally got this motherboard after a lot of experimentation with other motherboards trying to find the the most flexible uh, motherboard that had the most pcie slots with the lowest uh, power consumption and this was what I came up with at the time and so you can see this is actually a great motherboard for that purpose for flashing cards because it's got seven PCI slots they're all by 16 physically although I believe most of these are electrically by eight but uh, the larger uh, PCI slot allowed me to flash some of the large cards the some of the cards with 16 lanes and since I'm not really doing you know performance testing I'm just simply flashing the firmware and checking that everything's working uh, these were perfect for that purpose. So, like I said, this motherboard's been in service for about two years, and over that time, boy, it's gone through a lot. This motherboard has some serious battle scars. There was one incident in, in particular I always remember was I had gotten a box of 9207 8i cards, and this is a very large order that I had gotten from somebody, and when it arrived, you know, I started... Uh, plugging in the the seven cards in here to start flashing them and immediately as soon as I powered it up uh, there were sparks smoke and fire you know a component on one of the cards caught on fire and you know it was just I immediately had to pull the po power but before I even got there this motherboard was beeping uh, it had shut itself down you know basically it wasn't posting anymore and you know after removing all the cards I tried to revive it and took some effort I had to reset the power. It was in some weird, funky power state where it wouldn't power on. Uh, after resetting the power, it sort of powered on. Then I had to reset the CMOS, and that eventually got the motherboard working again. So it's been working since then. But yeah, this motherboard has definitely gone through quite a bit in its life. And today, uh, I'm actually officially retiring this board. So it's not completely uh, dead or broken or anything like that, but it has been acting a little bit strange lately. And in order to kind of keep our production of uh, IT mode cards flashed smoothly without interruption and stuff like that, uh, I've decided to replace it with an identical motherboard, which is already installed in the server. Uh, it's exact same motherboard, same model, but this one uh, probably has less battle scars than this one does. Um, but yeah, it's just been acting up. Sometimes when I boot it up, the one of the dims disappears, uh, reboot it again and it reappears. I've tried uh, reseeding the memory and stuff like that, but it does, doesn't seem to help. And the um, last couple of times, the BMC uh, heartbeat lights didn't power on, although uh, just yesterday it seems to power on again. So I don't know. Anyway, there's strange things happening with this board. Sometimes it takes a long time to post. Uh, meaning like I'll turn on the power and it'll take, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute before things start powering on. So anyway, it's, yeah, it's seen better days. And, but you know what? This has done an incredible service. Like I said, it's flashed over a thousand cards in this board uh, for the last two years. Uh, this was basically uh, the board I first settled on when I decided that I was going to be doing this art of server business with the IT mode uh, pre-flashed cards. Uh, I originally spent some time trying some other motherboards that didn't work out too great. Uh, there were other motherboards that had, you know, not this many PCI slots, but maybe like six. And that was just funky because some of the PCI slots would not operate properly if you had a certain processor. And even if I got the other processor, you know, it was just, I don't know, it, it, there were a lot of complications. And this motherboard just turned out to be great uh, for what I needed it to do. And also the X8 platform, by the way, works really well with the FreeDOS um, 
uh, firmware flashing tools from Broadcom or LSI. So a lot of the SAS to flash programs won't work on the, at least the DOS version won't work on the newer motherboards, um, especially like the X9 generation of super micro boards. It just won't work. You have to use the EFI version. And this allowed uh, the DOS version to work, which was beneficial for me when I first uh, starting to flash these cards in this board. Now, I don't use the DOS utility anymore. Uh, I've come up internally, we've come up with a more efficient way to flash the cards without rebooting the machine as much. And so that's not really a concern, but in the beginning, that was definitely one of the advantages of this board was that hey, all the, the, all the DOS utilities for flashing firmware just worked out of the box. So um, yeah, anyway, if you've bought an HBA card pre-flash from me, uh, especially PCI one at least, uh, in the last uh, two years or so, this was the motherboard that um, made that happen. So, uh, you know, it's officially uh, going uh, into retirement now. So if you guys uh, were one of the guys, if you were one of the guys who bought one of those cards, you know, uh, leave a comment in the video, uh, say something nice to this board for me, would you? Okay. So anyway, uh, just wanted to share that with you guys that, you know, this board's retiring. I've got another one. Uh, it's not brand new, but I think it has much, much less use on it. Uh, it's certainly behaving a lot better. You know, every reboot I'm consistently seeing all the dims, the dims aren't magically disappearing. And it also seems to be posting faster. So I don't know what would cause this to post a little slower. I haven't really dug into it, but that's what was happening. And uh, that's now been swapped out. And uh, along the way, by the way, you know, I had asked some people uh, on Serve the Home uh, a while ago saying, hey, you know, what's the endurance of these PCI slots? And not many people really had a, a good answer for that. I, I don't think that's something that people really think about. But uh, when you're doing what I'm doing, um, yeah, we're inserting and, and, and removing, you know, hundreds of and hundreds of cards off the motherboard all, uh, every time we're flashing a batch of cards. And so, yeah, this has been an interesting journey to kind of see, um, you know, how long these things uh, will last or what's the endurance. Now, granted, none of the PCI slots really had any problems. So I think the PCI slots are just perfectly fine. I'm not really sure why, you know, the DIMM slots seem to be flaking out and why the onboard BMC seems to be flaking out. You know, but anyway, that's what was happening. And then I don't know why it was taking longer and longer to post on this motherboard. But it has been through a lot. Like I said, there were cards that caught on fire in it. Uh, there were many times where there were other things that happened. So I've got so many stories with this motherboard. Um, and maybe someday I'll, I'll make some videos to share with you guys some of those stories. But, you know, the, probably the, the, the main one was the one when you know, things caught on fire on this board. Yeah, so... One of the other things that um, I've learned from this experience is that, uh, well, for one, the VGA cable has worn out on this. Believe it or not, that was one of the things that wore out on um, in this box, or I guess in the in the uh, I don't know what you call it, but in in this effort to flash a lot of cards. Uh, the VGA cable was one of the first things to go out. That was kind of strange. Uh, you know, I actually have, you know, I've been messing with computers for so long that I have a, a bunch of spares and stuff like that, but I never really thought I'd have to pull out a spare VGA cable. And that was one of the first things that went out. Um, not surprisingly, one of the SAS cables, and then these were brand new when I first got them. Uh, one of these cables started getting really flaky as well. So, you know, that was another thing that had to be replaced. So yeah, this is uh, it's it's in it's kind of interesting to me at least. You know, having not done something like this before. You know, I've built a lot of servers and PCs and stuff like that. But you know, to really exercise the endurance of these components uh, has been an interesting journey uh, to say the least. So anyway, yeah, the SAS cables after unplugging and plugging several times, one of them was starting to kind of get flaky. Where sometimes. Um, it, I would only see three out of uh, four connections. And, you know, if you kind of wiggled it a little bit, uh, the fourth connection would come online. And so I suspect that probably an internal wire was um, broken or something like that, you know? So anyway, I'm not really sure, but I've replaced that cable already. So yeah, so we got the motherboard replaced, VJ cable, SAS cable, all this stuff. So 
yeah anyway guys um just wanted to share that with you but also i uh, want to share something else with you guys so we i'm still going to have obviously since i just replaced a lot of the components here um i'm still going to have this flash uh machine working for me uh it's been great to show some benchmarks on videos and do some testing and, and all that stuff and also because the the um the six the by 16 pci slots has been useful for some of the cards that i sell that are uh, that larger uh pci cards but uh about a week ago or so there was a new acquisition i want to share that with you guys today so over here is a new server that i got and this is going to not exactly replace but probably complement uh that other flash server so that um I can start flashing the cards uh, faster and more efficiently. So let me kind of share with you. All right. So this is a really interesting system. I've never seen anything like this. And, you know, this is actually uh, kind of a hard to find system. I, you know, I was asking around to say to um, see if they, I could get another motherboard that had even more PCI slots. So one of the most time consuming uh, tasks with flashing these uh, IT mode cards is the reboot time. So, you know, obviously these PCI slots are not hot pluggable. And I have found that, you know, I've experimented with just kind of hot plugging them, uh, even though there's not officially hot pluggable and uh, some cards were damaged that way. So I don't do that anymore. Uh, but anyway, one of the most time consuming tasks is waiting for the machine to boot up and then shut back down. Well, shutdown is not as bad as booting up. So booting up, it goes through the post and I do enable the option ROM on a few slots. So that will then detect all the other cards and scans through that. So that takes some time. And then just generally, you know, the posting and booting and all that stuff takes a lot of time. And then I finally get to flashing, right? And uh, the flashing itself goes fairly quickly. Uh, the testing takes a little bit more time, but then, you know, then it's shut down, remove the cards and then stick in new cards. So the more time I can save uh, by flashing as many as possible for each boot cycle, you know, the, the more efficiently I can do this stuff. And that the, the other motherboard I just showed you over there had seven slots. This has 11 PCIe slots. Now, it's, 11 sounds great, but actually one of these PCI slots, it really isn't um, that useful. So it's really effectively a 10 PCI slot, but that's compared to the seven, that's three more slots. So that's almost a 40% gain in terms of the number of PCI slots. And so this machine can flash 10 cards at once. Uh, now there is the one disadvantage is that you'll notice that these are by eight slots. And so for some of the by 16 uh, slot cards, I won't be able to do here and I'll still have to use the uh, older uh, machine that I just showed you earlier. So yeah, this is going to be the new um, machine to that I'll primarily be using to flash the HBAs. Uh, I will still be using the older machine kind of in conjunction with this at the same time. And that way I can kind of get as much done in the shortest amount of time possible this is a dual socket motherboard like the other one but as you saw in the other one i only had one processor in the other machine and that was because in the x8 uh, generation which is the westmere generation of xeons the pci lanes were controlled by the ioh on the motherboard not by the cpus and this this is a x9 generation so this this is uh, sandy bridge and ivy bridge generation of xeons and the pci controllers are now attached to the the processors so in order for me to make use of all these lanes i have to have two processors installed so initially i was worried that this might actually end up consuming more energy and that's kind of a, a factor for me since um running this you know when uh where when we're in production and, and flashing cards and stuff like that um you know it's running constantly and so Power consumption is a concern, especially here in California, where power is uh, very expensive or electricity is very, very expensive. Uh, but it turns out with the right processors, uh, even with two processors installed, I could get this to idle uh, about the same as the single processor Westmere. So on the on the Westmere, that's an L5630. It's a, a quad core, uh, low voltage uh, or low power CPU. And that idles at about 70 watts. This is um, 
two Ivy Bridge, uh, I think E5 2630Ls, V2s. And this idles without anything installed, this idles at about 80, 85 watts. So it's a few watts more. It's like maybe 10 to 15 watts more. Um, and so that's, you know, a little bit more, but it, it is, you know, at least I get the, the improvement with the uh, additional PCI slots. So anyway, um, just wanted to share with you guys, you know, a little bit of uh, inside look at uh, how I do these things and, um, you know, so moving forward, if you're buying a card from me, uh, it might be flashed by uh, this machine or the, the new, um, the, what, the, the, the old machine, but with a new motherboard. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for today's video. I just wanted to share this with you, give you a inside look at how uh, your IT mode HBA cards are flashed for your free NAS server, for your Unraid server, or whatever else you're doing with the HBA cards you buy from my store. And anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, give me a like if you like this video. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. So anyway, have a good day and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.